Local folklore in southern Kalimantan tells a story that resembles the story of Noah. In Panacharan, the sacred folk tale of Dayak Naju who inhabits the southern part of Kalimantan, the first human to come down to this world is named Maharaja Bunu. At first he lived in an upper world in Lawu Nindan Tarung with his triplets, namely Maharaja Sanjong and Maharaja Sanjan. The triplets are the children of Manyame Tungal Garing Janjahunan Laut and his wife Kamalo Pudik Bulao Jan. At first he lived in an upper world in Lawu Nindan Tarung with his triplets, namely Maharaja Sanjong and Maharaja Sanjan. The triplets are the children of Manyame Tungal Garing Janjahunan Laut and his wife Kamalo Pudik Bulao Janjulan Karangan, the first human being created by Raniang Mahatala Langit, the Supreme God. Maharaja Bunu was sent down to Danam Kalyunan Beach, this world, by using a ship, namely Palanka Bulao Lambiang Yahu or abbreviated as Palanka, on Samachuan Hill, from which his descendants were scattered to fill the whole earth. According to Panacharan, the hill is located between Kahai and Rotat and Kahai and Katanang. Palanka is fully stocked with necessities of life, such as farming and hunting tools, tools for making weapons, rice seeds, fruit and plant seeds, and livestock seeds. Palanka is the origin of the name of the city of Palankaraya which is now the capital of central Kalimantan province. A wide plain dominates the topography of the southern Kalimantan region which is flat, smooth and flat. The slope of the land surface is mostly less than 1% descending southward towards the Java Sea and almost no mounds are visible on the entire plain. The plains are located in tropical rainforest areas, have high levels of rainfall throughout the year, have warm temperatures throughout the year, are mostly swampy and have many large rivers and tributaries so that the area is fertile and rich in sources of food and daily necessities. Several rivers flowed on the plain. The Burrito, Kapas, Murang, Kahayan and Sabango rivers are among them. This river regime has undoubtedly changed over the last thousand years due to processes of flooding, sedimentation, river movements and bends in the very flat plains. Exchange of flow and sequence between rivers is also possible. Many transverse canals connect one river to another in the area, some of which were constructed or rehabilitated in recent times. This section is known locally as, Angier, a canal that connects two rivers as part of a transportation network. The canal is also used as a main channel for tidal marsh irrigation that supplies water to and drains from the cultivated land. This plain is at an elevation from 0 to about 40 meters above mean sea level. Because it is on a flat and low plain, the effects of tides can reach as far as 160 kilometers from the coast. In the book of Genesis 7:12, backquote, backquote, it rained on the ground for 40 days and 40 nights. Single quote, single quote. In Genesis 7, 1, 2, 2, 0, backquote, backquote, the flood was on the ground for 40 days, and the waters rose and lifted the ark, so that it rose from the ground. The water was very wide and high above the ground, and the ark floated on the surface of the water. The water was very widespread on the ground, and all the high mountains that were under the sky were submerged. The water extended upwards and the hills were submerged as deep as 15 cubits. 15 cubits is about 23 feet or 6.8 meters. Kalimantan Island is one of the areas on Earth that has the highest rainfall during the year. Probabilistic studies of rainfall in the southern Kalimantan region show it can reach as high as 500 mm per day for a 100-year return period and even higher in mountainous areas. The catchment area is shaped like a light bulb where the upstream mountains are wider, with the highest rainfall, and the downstream, in the plains, are narrower. Therefore, the risk of catastrophic flooding in these plains is very high, exacerbated by the shape of the catch, the distribution of the rainfall, the intensity of the rainfall, flat, level, smooth and low land, and the reach of the far tide. Anyone can imagine how incredible the biblical flood would have been from 40 days and 40 nights of rain in this region. Noah's flood may have occurred here. 40 days and 40 nights in this region. Noah's flood may have occurred here. Due to the high level of flood risk in the region, it is possible that these floods have repeated several times over the last thousand years. Civilizations that grow back after the flood will be swept away again in the next flood, their nature returns to the way it was and the surviving humans spread to other parts of the world. Atlantis is the memory that the Mesopotamians and Egyptians remember the land of their first civilization, before the population spread caused by the catastrophe and the rapid rise in sea level during the Pleistocene Ice Age. Mesopotamia and Egypt are the oldest civilizations after the Ice Age that have had writing traditions. 
Other civilizations continue to remember their memories through myths and legends that collectively have the same stories even though across distances and times around the world. Sundaland or specifically Indonesia has been initiated as the location where Atlantis is located. The basis for this argument is that the Atlantic Ocean refers to the sea surrounding the continents of Eurasia and Africa, which was the understanding of ancient Greece before Christopher Columbus landed on the American continent. The proponents of this idea claim that the native Sundaland who were displaced by the tide or volcanic eruptions then made contact with ancient Egypt, which then passed on the story to Plato but it is not certain that Plato got the story entirely in the correct details, including the location and time period. The first ideas regarding the relationship between Atlantis and Indonesia came from the foremost theosophist, C. W. Leadbeater, 1854-1934, ad, in the book The Occult History of Java, published in 1951. An American polymath William Lauritsen and concurrently with Arizio Nunes dos Santos, 1937-2005, ad, also made Sundaland known internationally as the hypothetical location of Atlantis. Zia Abbas, a computer scientist, claims to have proven that Atlantis can be found in the South China Sea. Another idea regarding the existence of Atlantis in Sundaland is that of Sunil Prasanan, a molecular biologist who has worked, among other things, at Imperial College London. The Sundaland Atlanthology hypothesis is also supported by studies conducted by geologist and geophysicist Robert M. Schock of the College of General Studies at Boston University, together with Robert Aquinas McNally. They in 2003 published a book expressing a concept that the construction of the pyramids had been developed by a lost civilization, which previously existed in Sundaland. In 2013, Indonesian geologist Danny Hillman Nadawijaja joined forces with his discovery that the Gunung Padang Pyramid in Chanjur, West Java, appears to have been built around 13,000 years ago, indicating that Atlantis was in Indonesia. 9,000 years before Solon's lifetime, CA 600 BC, means about 11,600 years ago. The sea level at that time was about 60 meters below the present sea level. A map showing the land 11,600 years ago has been extracted by the authors from the GTOPO 30 elevation grid published by USGS. Traveling away from Sundaland, one can reach other islands such as the Nusa Tenggara Islands, Sulawesi, Maluku Islands, Mindanao and Luzon. Passing through these islands, one can reach the opposite continent, namely the Sahul continent, which combines the continents of Australia, Papua and the connecting landmasses. This continent includes the Pacific Ocean and Indian Ocean. So Plato's statement is the way to the other islands, and from here you can reach the opposite continent which includes the true ocean, is so fitting that the Atlantis which is hypothesized to be located in Sundaland is correct. Plato described the plain of Atlantis as being flat, surrounded by mountains that descend towards the sea, smooth and undulating, rectangular and oblong, 3,000 stadia, about 555 kilometers, long, 2,000 stadia, about 370 kilometers, wide, facing the direction of the south, sheltered from the north, surrounded by a series of beautiful mountains and small, and there are prosperous villages and people, rivers, swamps and grasslands. This description exactly matches the geographical conditions as shown in the map below. Flat, smooth and non-undulating plain, descending towards the sea, the slope of the land surface in the area is mostly less than 1% descending southward towards the Java Sea and no visible mound on the whole plain. The current condition of the plains above sea level consists of swamp areas, tidal swamp irrigation systems, above water housing, water transportation, mangroves and peatlands. Surrounded by a series of beautiful large and small mountains, there are two mountainous areas to the north of the plain, namely the Muller-Schwainer Mountains and the Meritus Mountains. The highest peak in the Muller-Schwainer Mountains closest to the plains is Mount Leongaprin with an altitude of 2,240 meters above sea level today, while the one in the Meritus Mountains is Mount Basar with an altitude of 1,890 meters. These mountains are mostly covered by primary forest, inhabited by various animals and as the residence of the Dayak tribe. Facing south and sheltered from the north, it is fitting that the plain faces south and is sheltered by mountains to the north. It is square and oval, about 555 kilometers long and about 370 kilometers wide, the plain shape is square in the south and oval in the north. They are almost the exact same size, 555 kilometers long and 370 kilometers wide. There are prosperous villages and people, rivers, swamps and grasslands, 
the plains in their current condition are located in tropical rainforest areas, have high levels of rainfall throughout the year, have warm temperatures throughout the year, are mostly swampy and have a lot of large rivers and tributaries so that the area is fertile and rich in food and resources for daily needs. Regarding the water channel system in the plains, Plato explained that there are four types of canals, perimeter channel, inland channel, sodetan and irrigation canal. The perimeter channel is an artificial channel, 100 feet about 30 meters deep, one stage about 185 meters wide, 10,000 stadia about 1,850 kilometers long, encircling the entire plain, receiving water flows from the mountains, meandering around the plains, meet in the city and empties into the sea. The inland channel is straight, 100 feet about 30 meters wide, 100 stadia about 18.5 kilometers intervals, empties into the perimeter channel and serves as a means of transporting wood and crops by ship. Sodetan was dug from one inland canal to another. The irrigation channel tapping from another channel is intended to irrigate the land in summer, dry season, while in winter, rainy season, it gets water from rain. This description fits exactly the current state of the plumbing system. The perimeter channel is an artificial channel, about 30 meters deep and about 185 meters wide. One of the rivers is the perimeter channel is the Burrito River and possibly the Negara River which is located on the eastern side of the plain. Since this, channel, was the closest distance to the capital, Egyptians apparently went through it as reported. The Burrito River is the largest and longest river in South Kalimantan, about 1,000 kilometers long, 600 to 800 meters wide and an average of 8 meters deep. Floods and Sedimentation Floods and river sedimentation on very flat plains over the last 11,600 years have changed the river regime, but by calculating its water delivery capacity, cross-sectional area times flow velocity, Assuming the same flow velocity due to the slope of the same gravitational energy, the cross-sectional area of the flow, width times depth, as described by Plato is about 185 times 30 equals 5,550 square meters, while the cross-sectional area of the current flow is unusually suitable, 700, on average, times 8 equals 5,600 square meters. The length of the perimeter channel is 1,850 kilometers, winds around the plains, meets at the city and empties into the sea. Measuring the length on the map but considering the meandering factor of the topography, yields almost exactly the length described by Plato, which is 1,850 kilometers. Meanwhile, by calculating the square and elliptic shape of the plains, which are 555 kilometers long and 370 kilometers wide, the circumference of 1,656 kilometers is obtained. It is also logically correct if the meander factor is not taken into account. So it is clear that Plato was not lying. The perimeter channel gets its flow from the mountains. This is suitable because the rivers currently inside the plain originate from the Muller-Schwainer Mountains and the Meritus Mountains. The inland channel is straight, about 30 meters wide, about 18.5 kilometers in length and empties into the perimeter channel. The rivers which are currently inland channels are the Kapus, Murring, Kahayan, Burrito Hulu, Mengkatup and possibly Sabango rivers. This river regime must have changed over the last 11,600 years due to processes of flooding, sedimentation, river displacement and meandering on very flat plains. Exchange of order and flow between rivers is also possible. However, in general the straightness and orientation of the rivers can still be seen today, namely that they are parallel to each other and trending north-south, and in the same way as the Burrito River, its width has changed. The average distance of these rivers is about 20 kilometers, which can also be considered to be close to what Plato said, which is about 18.5 kilometers. Inland canals are used to transport timber and crops by boat, this custom still exists today. The river is an inseparable part of the daily life of the people in this region. Most of the rivers in southern Kalimantan are used as a means of transportation. The traditional boats known locally as, Juking, come in many types and shapes. These rivers and all their tributaries are a network of the transportation system and are very important means for the community because every area can be accessed by rivers. Since ancient times, the river network has supported the economic and social activities of the people of southern Kalimantan. In addition, the river network has become the lifeblood of the population's economic life because most of their economic activities are carried out through and on the river. Communication between areas in the interior, cities and ports in particular is also carried out via rivers. 
Rivers are a mainstay for the smooth distribution of goods and people from upstream to downstream and vice versa. Various types of forest, mining and agricultural products that are abundant in inland areas such as wood, rubber, patchwork, rattan, resin, jalutong, wax, coal, gold, pepper, bird's nest, weaving material, dried or salted fish, deer jerky, fruit and many others are transported to collection points or ports via a network of rivers. On the other hand, various daily necessities such as rice, sugar, salt, flour, corn, cooking oil, tobacco, gambier, pottery, household utensils, copper wire, cloth and so on are also transported from the port to various areas in the interior via the river network. So dead and dug from one inland channel to another, it is exactly the same as it is today. As can be seen on the map, various Sodetan resides in the area, some of which have been constructed or rehabilitated recently. This Sodetan is known locally as, Angier, which is a channel that connects two rivers as part of a transportation network. This channel is also used as a tidal marsh irrigation channel which functions to supply water to and drain from agricultural land. The irrigation channel tapping from another channel is meant to irrigate the land in summer, dry season, while in winter, rainy season, it gets water from the rain resulting in two harvests a year, this is exactly the same as the current conditions. The tidal swamp irrigation system in southern Kalimantan is traditionally known as, Angier system, whereby a main channel called, Angier, or, Antison, is built connecting two tidal rivers, also used for navigation purposes. The irrigation canals were built to irrigate and drain agricultural land from and into the Tangier, namely the secondary channel called Handel, or Tata, and the tertiary channel called Saka. During low tide, these channels drain toxic water while at high tide fresh water flows into the land. This system produces two rice crops per year. This system is also used to grow other crops or for aquaculture. Southern Kalimantan is currently an exporter of rice to other regions. The author concludes that the channel system mentioned by Plato is in fact a river transportation network and a flooded irrigation system in the southern part of Kalimantan. According to Plato, the island of Atlantis, where there is a port with a narrow entrance, is in a sea surrounded by boundless continents. The hypothesized boundless continent is Sundaland which is connected to the Asian continent, and the only sea it surrounds at that time is the ancient Java Sea. Therefore, the authors hypothesize that the island of Atlantis is located in the Java Sea. The island of Atlantis, where there is a hill in the middle, is an island located near a landmass identified from the digital elevation grid model, where the sea level is about 60 meters below the current sea level, as shown in the image below. As shown on the map, the island lies within the strait. There is a relatively flat plain to the north, part of it is the southern part of Kalimantan Island. The real sea, around the island, as described by Plato, is the ancient Java Sea, which is a bay with an entrance in the form of a strait. Cranter's comments are quoted by Proclus on Plato's dialogue as saying that, less than according to them, there were seven islands in the sea at that time and in the range of a thousand stadia, 185 kilometers. This is more or less suitable in describing the geography of the region in the Java Sea at that time. Although the number of islands as shown on the map is not exactly the same due to the unknown processes of sedimentation, scouring, coastal movement, limestone dissolving and tectonic movements over the past 11,600 years, and the authors removing the smaller islands, the geography of the area is generally suitable. The statement, in the range of a thousand stadia, 185 kilometers, is also generally appropriate. One of the islands is identified as Bowen Island. The author reconstructed the city of Atlantis based on Plato's description, as shown in the image below. This location was identified by sailors as Gosongia or Annie Florence Reef, a small coral reef that rises to the surface at low tide. Plato's description that, less than they have fountains, one cold and the other hot, flowing in many places, exalted and used for the purpose of enjoyment and are the hallmarks of their springs less than, is appropriate. Bowen Island, which is located in the Java Sea, is the prototype of the island of Atlantis because it has the same environment, geological formations and tectonic processes, and is located close to the island of Atlantis. The islands of Bowen and Atlantis are both located in the Bowen Arc, formed in the Paleogene and Neogene period through tectonic processes caused by extensional faults in the Java Sea that separates Java and Kalimantan. 
There are several hot and cold springs on the island which were generated by tectonic activities in the region. The description that, less than stones used in their work were excavated from under the central island, and from below the mainland zone, outside and inside, one kind is white, the other is black, and the third is red, and while being excavated, is at the same time perforated. For multiple piers, having a roof formed from natural rock less than, is also suitable. The white, black and red stones mentioned by Plato are apparently similar to the igneous rocks found on Bawin Island with white acid black gray alkaline, and red iron oxide colors, known among others from the types leucite, phonolite, trachyte and onyx. Igneous rocks like those on Bawin Island are hard and strong so they have enough natural strength to stand up as a double pier roof. The depth of the Java Sea at the time of Atlantis, 11,600 years before now, was about 20 to 30 meters, making it quite possible for the navigation of large ships. In Plato's dialogue, the kingdom of Atlantis was founded by a god named Poseidon and the kingdom was divided into ten parts which were given to his children. In the center of the fort there is a sacred shrine dedicated to Poseidon and his wife, Cleto. In Critias, Solon in writing his poetry translates the god's name to, Poseidon. Poseidon is one of the twelve Olympian gods in Greek mythology. His main domain was the ocean, and he was called the backquote backquote god of the sea. Solon translated the name of the god because of the similarity in nature. The god Poseidon who was worshipped by the people of Atlantis is synonymous with Lord Varuna, a god in pre-Dharma archipelago mythology, both of whom are given the nickname backquote backquote god of water, or backquote backquote god of the sea. So, Solon translated Varuna into Poseidon. The island of Borneo was once known as Warunapura or the place of the god Varuna. Furthermore, the Nagarakretagama manuscript mentions a country within the Majapahit sphere of influence called Barune, later identified as Barunai, a kingdom now known as Brunei. Later European sources in the 16th century referred to the island's name as Bernay by Antonio Piga. Bernay by Antonio Pigafetta or Borne by Duarte Barbosa. The Dutch and British colonials gave the island the name Borneo.